Okay, let's talk about something that's really, really important if you want to do electrical or electronic diagnostic work on cars and trucks. And this is something that not a lot of people understand, so hopefully this will clarify some things. What we're dealing with here is a, a Ford Escape that is setting a code for O2 sensor heater not working, not working, not operational. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to check that whole entire circuit in one fell swoop. Now because the the PCM is right here in the in the firewall, it's real easy to get to. We're going to go we're going to cut to the chase, which is really good because we can rule a lot of things out really quickly as to what's going on with this vehicle. All right, now I have a diagram here, and on this this diagram what we're going to do is we are going to look at the operation of the heater here and we are going to check to see that this heater has power, that it has ground, and that it's being activated properly. And we're going to do this all with one simple test. So up, up here, power comes in from a fuse. Okay, and that fuse is hot when the key is on. Comes down to our heater, comes down to the computer, and it's switched by the driver in the computer, supplied ground, and then the heater comes on. Okay, now this, these heaters, generally speaking, um, are not turned on and left on solid. A lot of times they're, they're switched off and on and um, to you know help control the amount of current that flows through it and, and to keep the heaters from getting getting uh, too hot or, or whatever um, but anyway we call this uh, duty cycle control or pulse width modulation depending on on how you want to look at it but uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to back probe at the the computer right here and i've got the wire already set up but this is this is the spot so we've got that wire selected right here and what we will be able to do is we'll be able to see if we have power and, um, and if we have ground, like I said. Now I've got, I've got a voltmeter hooked up and the key, the key is on. Okay, so this is our, our key on voltage that you're seeing right here. So obviously we have power. Now you might be saying, well, where's that power coming from? And why do we have battery voltage at that spot on the ground side? Well, here's the thing. Okay, when, when current is not flowing through this circuit, then you're going to see battery voltage on that circuit before your control or before your switch, which is in the computer. So being back probed right here, we see 12 volts all along this line, even through the load and all the way down to here because we're looking at a potential difference, which is a difference in charges, positive, negative, okay? The, you know, the two, the two components that, that that must be in place in order to make electricity, electricity. So that means we have positive charge all the way down here, all the way down here, even through the load in the heater, all the way to this point right there. All right, now this voltage that we're seeing along here, it's not gonna go away until the switch in the computer closes and current begins to flow. So once that happens, everything from our heater down to our computer is going to then be truly part of the ground circuit. All the voltage will drop as it flows through the heater. So you could see we have steady voltage there now. I'm going to go and start the engine and then we will we'll see what happens. So let me walk around here. Now if you look at our voltage, okay, it's, it's switching, which like I said, that's a pretty common thing to see. Um, and if we want to look at it a little better with this uh, fancy little meter, we can, we, can actually, we can actually run it like this. And you can actually see that switching action. So it's switching from about 14 and a half volts back to zero, back to 14 and a half volts. And that's just the way, that's the way the computer runs it. Okay, you don't have to have a fancy tool like this to do, you can just use a regular voltmeter. But what that tells us is, okay, we know we have voltage. We know that the wiring down to the sensor is good. We know that the wiring back up to the computer is good. And we know that the computer is doing its job. So that tells us that this particular O2 sensor, the heater is working just fine. Now being right here at the computer, we can switch over to another one of the, the O2 sensors. And look, it's doing the same thing. Okay, but there's four, two upstream and two downstream. So let's switch back over to another one. 
Yeah, this is one of the downstream sensors. And now look at what we got. We don't have our switching. We don't have anything. So what we can do is I'm going to go turn the key back off, turn it on, or shut the engine off, and then key on. Let's see if we have voltage there. There is voltage. Okay. So, since there is voltage now, and there wasn't voltage before, or at least when the engine was running, that tells us that the computer was grounding that circuit. Now, it was not switching off and on. Oh, it just went away. I think we have found our problem. Somewhere in here, we either have a bad, we either have bad wiring down in this downstream O2 sensor circuit, or we have a bad computer. So we're going to diagnose it further. But you can see how easy it was for us to check out a circuit, knowing a few rules about how electricity flows makes all the difference in the world. So here we are back on the upstream O2 sensor, and you can see nice steady voltage with key on engine off. But anyway, it's a good, it's a good trick. It, it works very, very well. <laughs>